Welcome back to part two in this video series on campaign naming and tag naming. I think we're all familiar with the conventional way of putting tags into a CRM and naming those tags. We have things like prospect and client and free download, things like that. And while that is somewhat useful, it is a long way from being a true automation system. Tags are very important and you can do lots of things with them. So let's take a look at what you can actually do with tags. Of course, one of the most important things is to be able to segment people into categories. If this person has these tags, then send them this particular email, which is more relevant to them. That's obviously, I think, when you're talking about CRM automation is the more specific you can get about information and the communication process, the better your sales are going to be. The second thing you can do with tags is probably one of the most important, and that's the automation system. If this tag is applied, then do this next step. If this tag is removed, then do this next step. And you can move people back and forth between campaigns, and that's a really important aspect of being able to use your CRM properly. And then finally, it just makes it far easier to search your database for contacts that fit specific criteria. So to that end, then you're going to need a tagging system that makes sense. And what we have here then is five different types of tag categories. And if you take a look at one of my CRMs for this particular company, you can see that we have history tag, status tag, profile tag, another status and history. There are some tags here called import. That's just an imported list, uh, but mostly status, profile, history. There's also one more tag name that you don't see here that we'll talk about as well. So I think it's important to understand what these tags are and what they mean and how to use them properly. So this is going to take a little bit of time. So the first tag we have is called a system tag. Now, if that's new to you as a category, then uh, this is an important lesson in how to use tags properly. A system tag is basically only one of two things. It is uh, either start or stop. And what that means is putting somebody into a campaign by using a system tag, starting them off at the top of a funnel based on that tag goal is achieved. And of course, if somebody wants to be pulled out of a specific funnel or you want to pull them out and put them in another, you can use a stop tag or a stop system tag. And so uh, this allows you to start and stop people or contacts within your campaigns. The second tag is called a status tag. And a status tag is very important. In any given campaign, a contact can only have one status tag at a time. And status tags get added and removed as someone makes their way through an automation funnel. So why is this important? Well, if you want to keep an eye on the thousand people that you put into a campaign and how many of them have taken action in the specific areas of the campaign, then as each of those contacts moves through the campaign from one step to the next, status tags get added and removed. So for example, in the beginning, you might want to add the tag has not downloaded or has not watched the video. And then once they watch the video, you want to remove that tag and then add the next tag, which says um, move them into a request for consult. Once they've booked the consult, remove them from the has not booked consult and put has book consult and then so on and so forth. So as somebody moves through a campaign, you're adding and removing status tags one by one so that that person only has one status tag at a time. That's, that's great for reporting purposes. Then uh, the next tag you have uh, it are tags that never get removed. They can only get updated and that's what we call profile. Profile tags are demographics, geographics and preferences associated with 
what they like and don't like and where they live and what type of business they have. Profile tags are very important for you to be able to search your database, especially if you have thousands in there, to send out a specific email to people that meet a certain profile. People can have unlimited profile tags, but essentially they rarely get removed. They can get updated if a person's profile or preferences change. How do you collect this information? You can collect profile tags based on radio button selections or checkbox selections. You can add them manually. You can import them uh, a list and add a profile tag as you're importing. So profile tags are very, very important. The next tag you have, which is a little almost the same, but, but quite different, and that's what we call a history tag. History is what have they done with us? In other words, what have they purchased? What have they downloaded? Keeping a history or a log of what anyone has done with your company. History tags, of course, can get added through automation or they can get added manually, but it's important to never remove them because you want to keep track of what people have actually done with your company. The final tag, which is probably the least used one, is what we call uh, to-dos or internal tags. That keeps an eye on sales teams, or tasks that are assigned to people within your company. But essentially, the first four tags are the most important. System, status, profile, and history. Once you understand this, then you can use those tag categories in conjunction with campaign naming, in conjunction with tag naming. So let's, let's go ahead and take a look at a a funnel specifically and how we might use these tags. So to start anyone off in a funnel you might say if this system tag which is start is added to a contact that's the tag goal at the top of the funnel. Immediately what you might want to do is remove that tag so that if the person if you wanted to add them into the campaign again if they already had that tag, then that goal would not be achieved. So you might literally just go and remove the system tag right, right from the get-go. And then you're going to start your automation. So at this point, you might want to add a status tag, which says, has not taken action, uh, has not downloaded the video, has not done whatever you wanted to do. Then the email. And in the email, it basically says, go do this thing. And then once they do the thing, you remove the previous status tag, right? Remove that one. And then add a new one, which says, this is their current status of what they're going to do next. So that's essentially how to use system and status tags. If any of those things you want to keep as, uh, as a record, then in conjunction with adding a status tag, at the same time, you might want to also add a history tag. This person has downloaded this ebook and keep a record of that. This person has made this sale, keep a record of that. Also in this funnel, you might have a survey and in that survey, there's some profile tags that are collected. So you can see that you can get very complex, but by keeping only five tag categories, you're basically keeping things in order. They make sense. It's not just random tag names like prospect and made a sale and type of business, that sort of thing. So you're keeping track of all of your tags properly. So how to name tags. And this may seem like it is more, uh, it is very specific, but it more specific than you need. That's not true. It's actually very important to, to follow the system so that you understand what tags mean at any given point so that you can do complex automation based on those tag names. So the first part is the uh, category of the tag. And the category, again, is system, status, profile, history, or marketing and to-dos. So in this case, let's just put system. 
The next part is the name of the campaign because you want to keep tags separately based on all your campaigns. What does this tag do in a specific campaign? So that would mean the number of the campaign and then the type of the campaign. So if your campaign is 10.marketing, it's system hyphen 10.marketing. So next is the name of campaign. So it's 10.marketing uh, free ebook. And then finally, the name of the tag because you could have system 10.marketing free ebook apply to several different tags and then the final qualifier is the actual name of the tag which is start so remember in system tags you can only have a start or stop let's take a look at this in terms of status tag so the category would be status let's put it in the same campaign 10.marketing free ebook and then the status would be has not downloaded the ebook. Does that make sense? And then once they download the ebook, it would be the same. And in this case, has downloaded. Does that make sense? And at the end of the campaign, you would have this tag goal that said system 10 dot marketing free ebook stop so if somebody call, somebody called you up and said hey i don't want to be in this campaign rather than uh, searching out that person in the specific campaign and where they are and trying to figure out how to pull them from that campaign all you have to do is add that tag and they get pulled immediately from the campaign because it skips over all the previous automation and sends them right to the end Let's take a look at this in terms of actually building a funnel. So let's say I wanted to build a new campaign and this campaign will be uh, sign up for the free tutorials, which is maybe this tutorial will be part of that. So let's just go over here to start from scratch and we're going to start building the campaign and rather than uh, start it with this web form. Let's use a tag to start them into this campaign because the web form could be anywhere. It could be in another campaign. Uh, and then once they filled it out in that campaign, you would add a start tag. And then the start, start tag goal applied would be here. So let's name our campaign first. So this is called 10 dot marketing free tutorials. Or you could be more specific than that. Sign up for free tutorials, whatever. So there's the name of the campaign. So all of our tags then would be using that campaign naming convention. So let's go over to tags and let's create a few obvious tags. And we can add these in bulk, by the way. So let's go and do that. So uh, we're just going to click this button called add tags in bulk. And one of the common elements will be the name of the campaign. So let's just go system. And, dot, and you could have copied and pasted this from the previous uh, free tutorials. And then uh, start. So that's a full tag name. And what we can do is we can copy that because we know that we need a stop tag. Just go down here. System 10.marketing free tutorials stop. Then let's also throw in a status tag. So that all, all of that remains the same. Let's put in a status category. Free tutorials has not downloaded. And then another status tag. 10 dot marketing free tutorials has downloaded. And let's also for fun throw in a history tag to keep track of all of the people that have subscribed. Actually, you know, let's change this to has not subscribed because it's not really a download. It's just a subscription. So has not subscribed. And this one is has subscribed. And then a history tag to keep track of everyone that has done it. Because 
the status tag will eventually get removed because they can only have one at a time per campaign. So 10 dot marketing free tutorials, subscriber. So anyone who has that tag, you can say, Hey, let's find all of the people that have subscribed to the free tutorials and you could click on the number in the count. Let's go and add those tags and there they are. So as the count moves up, as the number of people who flow through the campaign moves up, for example, in history tags, let's say this was 10. If you clicked on that, it would show all 10 people that are subscribers to that specific funnel. So let's go back to our campaign now and put these into action. So the first one is a start tag. So if the start tag is applied, this is a tag applied goal, start them off in this campaign and do the first piece of automation. Okay, so immediately what you might want to do is just send out the email that says, uh, here's your subscription, go here to find your videos. So essentially, if this goal is achieved, send this email. And then immediately here, you might want to remove the start tag and then put in a status tag that says has not yet uh, subscribed. So let's go and do that. So let's go and remove the tag, start tag, because all this does is launch them in. So you just want to immediately remove it just because if somebody wants to circle back on this campaign and they already have that start tag, the next time it gets added, nothing will happen because this is a tag applied goal. If they already have the tag and you apply it, then nothing will happen. So you want to remove that tag or any system tags one by one as they get added. So then let's go and add in the status tag that says has not subscribed. So let's click in the list has not subscribed. And then as soon as they subscribe, you're going to remove that tag and add a new one. So how do you know whether they've subscribed or not? Well, that could be a web form that they filled out to subscribe. Or it could be they visited a web page. Page visited. So if they actually went to the page and logged in and they visited a specific page on your website, then that goal is achieved. And then what you would do, remove the status goal that says has not subscribed and replace it. So let's go and remove has not subscribed and then you're going to apply the tag has subscribed. I know it says has has subscribed, but just a little bit of a typo there. And then uh, also you might want to add the history tag now that you keep in your records forever because status tags again get added and removed as they move through the campaign. So let's go and apply the history tag to keep track of everyone who is a subscriber. So there you go. And again, obviously if they haven't subscribed, you would send another email, put a delay timer in that sort of thing. So for example, if the page visited is the goal here, what you can do is put in a delay timer and then send another email with obviously this page visited goal being the trigger that says stop sending this person emails because they've already subscribed. So that's um, a very detailed description of the five part tagging system, system status profile, history, marketing, and to-dos. If you want more help, there's a couple of things. Just go to the homepage tutorials.paultoby.com. That's me, Paul Toby and you can click on docs which takes you to the documentations of groundhog let's go and do that so there's your groundhog documentation and also there's the youtube channel with lots of videos and there's also the facebook user group thank you